Hey guys, this is a video on how to use audio tracks, specifically with GarageBand. And I've taken this snippet, um, this tutorial snippet from a more extensive course that I have available in GarageBand. If you're looking for that, I'll leave a link in the description so it's kind of a full course from start to finish on everything you need to know about GarageBand uh, for the super beginner. It's almost two hours long. so. Um, this is just a snippet from that course. If you're just looking on how to use audio tracks with GarageBand, feel free to continue with this video. But if you want that more extensive course, just check out the link in the description. Let's look at what audio tracks are. So I'm going to close this down and I'm just going to go right click and delete these tracks right now. And I'm going to delete this one and automatically when you delete um, an, a track where you have no more tracks left, it will bring up this window. So we're going to do an audio track. We can, it gives us two options in GarageBand here. It says record using a microphone or line input or drag and drop audio files. And, or it says connect a guitar or bass to your Mac to play and record through virtual, virtual amps and pedal effects. So um, it doesn't matter. Well, let's first use, uh, sorry, it does matter, but it doesn't matter in our case because we're going to go both. We're going to go over both those ways. So. Let's first record using a microphone or a line input. So this is what I meant when we were talking about the settings page and where we're gonna have to tell GarageBand what our input is. So here is where you might um, have a roadblock if you don't have a certain piece of equipment. This piece of equipment is called an audio interface. So what that is, is basically like a little box where you can plug your microphone into this box and from that box into your computer. Because uh, if you think of a microphone and the cord that is connected to a microphone, on the other end, it's like a, it's called an XLR. And it's like a big little circle kind of cylinder with three um, kind of prongs in it. And you can't plug that into your computer. So you need this thing called an audio interface to be the middleman between your computer and the microphone. Um, the only other option around that is if your microphone that you're using has a USB plug to it, it can actually go right into your computer. So if you do have that, um, then you don't need an audio interface. But most of the time, if you're using a microphone like this one right here, or any professional audio, you will need an audio interface. So in my case, I'm using the Apogee One as my audio interface. So my microphone is connected to my Apogee One, and that is connected to my computer. So you just really have to answer this question here. My instrument is connected with, uh, in this case, it says my speakers. So I don't want that. I'm gonna have to go here to click this arrow, and I'm gonna have to change this to the Apogee One V2. So I'm gonna have to click that, and that will, um, sync up the two. It will tell GarageBand, okay, that there's a microphone connected to this, so I can actually start recording with that microphone. And then like we did with the software instrument track, you will answer the question, I want to hear the sound from the speakers or my headphones or the computer. And so you can kind of, if it's not the right answer here, click the arrow and then choose the right answer uh, where, where you want to hear the sound from. Then X that, we'll click create, and then we'll have an audio track here. So the symbols are a bit different. The audio track gives us this um, blue little audio signal here. And then we also have our controls window at the bottom and our library window too. Same thing with software instruments, those windows come up. The library window is a bit different because we can't go and choose like the bass or classic electric piano and all those things because those are software instruments. Now we're in audio tracks. And the same thing, we can have many audio tracks here, and we can have different types of audio in each track going left to right. But for now, let's just focus on one. So this is my main audio track, and we can always, for you know, just a quick tip here, you can double click these and maybe change this to vocal track or, or just vocal. And we have a couple um, I want to go through the, what the library is for audio tracks. Similar in a way to software instrument tracks where we have kind of sections here, voice, acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and bass. So what these are, these are called presets. 
And if you've heard the term, you will hear the term um, if you continue on this journey of music production. Presets are things that um, are preset for you that make will make it sound um, what you're look what you what you're looking for. <laughs> so let's use it. Let's talk about an example. So there. GarageBand gives you these voice presets, which means you can go and click uh, bright vocal, classic vocal, compressed vocal, dance vocal. Maybe you're doing a podcast and you want a narration vocal. These are giving you the presets that will make it sound like whatever you choose here. So if you want a dance song, then it will give you the presets for a dance vocal. So let me show you what I mean by um, going to the controls window. You can see these knobs here, like the compression is set at around here. We have low, mid, don't worry too much about the terms, just kind of look where things are placed. If I go over here and then change it to edge vocal, the things, the knobs have changed. Then so that's what I mean by presets. GarageBand has twisted the knobs for you so you don't have to go and twist the knobs. And if what I read recommend to start out is don't go and twist the knobs right away if it's too overwhelming. Eventually you're gonna to wanna to get into it, but you can just use these presets on the side. So I would, you know, let's do a classic vocal. We can shift it here and we can start recording our vocal. And the same thing goes for acoustic guitar, electric guitar, and that's a good segue into using the other type of audio track that GarageBand gives us. So if we go to track, a new track, this other audio track here where it says connect a guitar or bass to your Mac to play and record through virtual instruments, amps, and pedal effects. So we're gonna create this audio track and make sure we want and you answer those questions here where your instrument is connected to whether it's directly into your computer or you have an audio interface and then you hear the sound from so here it's given us this um, guitar amp for us and GarageBand gives us all these amps under these sections here so if we want a clean guitar and we want clean echoes then this is what it looks like here and this is what the knobs are for this amp and it kind of it looks like an amp, right? It, well, it is an amp, uh, it's the preset sounds of this amp. And we can scroll left to right here, going through the different amp sounds that we want. That's what audio tracks are. Let's get into what drummer tracks are.